In this video, I'm going to show you how we can set up RevenDB in a secure manner. Typically, you would assume this is going to be a very involved process, but we've done everything possible to ensure that setting up RevenDB for production in a secure manner is as easy as possible. So let me show you what is involved. I've downloaded the RC2 release, and now all I'm going to do is double click the start command, and this is going to start RevenDB. We're going to start bound to a random port on the loopback device, and we have three available options. The unsecure option is using HTTP and is only suitable for a CI server, local development machine, if you don't have any production data whatsoever. If you actually care about your data, in, in other words, in, all, in pretty much all other circumstances, you want it secure, which is why we have these two options. In either case, we are always going to secure the data using SSL and TLS 1.2, which effectively means that all communication to and from the server are encrypted using top-of-the-line encryption. Furthermore, both client and server are going to authenticate one, one another using X509 certificates. If you don't care about security, the only thing you need to know is that it's secure. If you care about security, you know that it is secure. Now, the problem is that when you start talking about, oh, I need, I'm going to use a cell, the immediate problem is how do I get a certificate? Now, you can provide your own certificate if you already have one or the admin can generate one for you. But in this case, we're going to assume that you don't. So let's go ahead and generate one. Now, this portion of the setup process requires a license key. And if you don't already have one, you can get a free one by clicking on this button. Now, why do we need a license key to just to do the setup? The reason for that is that the way let's encrypt work, it allows you to bind a particular, uh, it, it sorry, let me start from the beginning. The way let's encrypt work, it issues you a certificate for a domain. Now, you must prove that you own this domain. Now, this particular machine is not on the public internet. It's going to be very hard for me to prove that I own a specific domain. Because of that, and because I assume that your situation is very similar, I'm actually going to allow you to claim a subdomain under this location. Now, in order to ensure that multiple people don't get the certificate to the same domain, we are binding the domain that you're going to choose here to the license that you provided. I'm going to use this as the name. This is my dog name. And I'm going to hit next. This is going to go to the server, claim my domain name. Everything is OK. Now, I'm going to bind to the loopback device just because I'm going to set up multiple nodes on this machine so you can see how easy it is to set up a fully secure cluster. Add node, add node. Now, this is bound to 127.0.0.2. This is bound to 127.0.0.3. This is a nice trick that allows me to run multiple services all on the default 443 HTTPS port with on the same machine because I'm using the virtual 127 uh, loopback IP. I accept the terms and I move on. Now, here's what's going on. My local RevenDB server, this guy, has talked to Let's Encrypt and issued a challenge, it issued the start of a challenge to get a, to get a certificate for this domain. In order to prove to Let's Encrypt that I own this domain name, I need to somehow answer this challenge. I'm doing that by having my local RevenDB server talk to the RevenDB server on the cloud, this endpoint, and this updates the global DNS settings. So in other words, now we're updating for DNS propagation to happen. This typically takes about a minute. Once this has happened, and this is just what happened, we have successfully created a, this server. We have authenticated that, now we're good. There is some stuff here that you can read later, and notice that we have downloaded a zip file. Let me just restart the server. I need to select the particular client certificate that I'm going to use. This will is installed for me automatically during the wizard process. I'm hitting OK, and I have a running server. 
Now that I have this running server, I need to decide what I'm going to do about it. So the first thing I need to understand is that this, is, uh, is this isn't actually just a single server. This is actually a cluster. This was set up for me automatically. Now you can see here that this is a very sad cluster. Only one node is up. So let's go ahead and see what I need to do to start up the other nodes in the cluster. For doing that, this is going to be key. So as you see here, this is the uh, cluster settings that I have. And what I have here, this is the client certificate that I can use to perform admin operations against the RevenB cluster. This was installed on my local machine as part of the setup process. This is why I could just hit a uh, start and get everything working. Here I have the configuration setup for each of the nodes that I have. So this is for A, B, and C. Now, I'm going to just go here and create a couple of additional nodes. And now, let's do it this way. In here, I have the settings and the certificate that was generated for me through Let's Encrypt. Let's call this B, oh yes, I cannot call it B, server B. Now I'm going to go here and copy these files. One thing that I also need to do, I need to go here and update this. So now you can see this is the actual configuration. This server is going to be b.arava.dbs.local.revenue.net. It's bound to this IP address using this certificate, and this is the data there that it uses. This line tells us that we're using Let's Encrypt, which means that RevenDB will also take care of refreshing the certificates for us. Now, let's just run the server. And this is pretty much all I need to do. Now you can see that I'm on node A. This node has detected that node B came up. It is valid and everything is just working. Let's go and set up node C as well. Server C. And again, just changing the data directory, everything else. Here we have c.arava, and now we're bound to 127.0.0.3. Start in the server. And now we have a three-way cluster. This is set up with full authorization, full authentication. Now, let's go to certificate and see what's going on. You can see that we have two existing certificates. This certificate is actually the certificate for the entire cluster. Let's rename it. Server certificate for cluster. Now, this is the admin certificate. You can see here, by the way, this is a cluster. This is the cluster administrator. Now, this is almost enough. However, if I'm actually running a production system, I don't want to just give someone the ability to run any command on my cluster. It makes no sense to give a user a, a, a cluster administrator command. So I'm going to generate a client certificate. In this case, let's say that I'm uh, building a blog. So blog.ind.com. This is my user. I can set up a, a, a password, one, two, three, four, five, six, because I'm an extremely secure person. And I'm going to give it a read-write to the blog and to the stats DB. And I don't need a password. What you can see here is now I have this client certificate and I have a PFX and a PEM. Uh, PFX is typically used in Windows, C Sharp, Java. PEM is more, more often used in Node.js and Python and uh, some of the Linux tools. And I can now give it to my application. 
and that's the certificate that it will be using to talk to the server. This certificate only allows us access to these two databases. And now we're almost done. The only thing I'm left is to go ahead and create a new database. And we have a fully functioning server. Sorry, we have a fully functioning cluster. And this is actually running on two separate nodes. Everything secure, set up, and done.